Welcome to a little bit of Lab Rat Fun Networking with Fish. Going to go ahead and dive right into CyberFlood. It's a Spirant Layer 4 through 7 traffic generation tool. Been doing proof of concept lab work for the better part of uh, two decades now. So tossing this together for some of my coworkers as well as for anyone else who happens to use CyberFlood. So hope you enjoy. We're just going to dive right into it. So... Layer 4 through 7 traffic generation. So for cyber flood perspective, if you've got the cyber flood, what we're going to go ahead and do today is we're going to take a Cisco Nexus 9K. I've got it cabled to 10 gig ports um, off to the cyber flood C100 appliance. We'll see a picture of the cyber flood C100 appliance. Going to create uh, clients over on one side. That's going to be on the 10101 subnet, so client 101. Server is going to be on the 10201 subnet, so 201. What you might notice is I always tend to, from a best practice perspective, so I don't forget, I do little uh, reminders for myself. So C for client is actually um, lower in the alphabet than S for server, so I make the second octet um, lower and then the other one higher. So I do little things for myself to be able to easily quickly troubleshoot or remember stuff. So anyway, let's go ahead and dive right in. Client side 10.101, server side 10.201. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cable this up to the, um, C, the Spirant C100 cyber flood to the Nexus 9K, send some traffic, create some stuff over on the cyber flood and then play a little bit. So, First, we're going to cable two CyberFlood 10 gig ports to our Nexus. So I'm going to connect a cable, a 10 gig cable, from the C100 on one port um, over into my Nexus on E111. And then I'm going to do the same thing over on the quote unquote server side. What I noticed is, is that I tend to refer to it as a client cable <laughs> and a server cable. So I had someone actually ask me, they were like, oh, wait, so does the CyberFlood have a certain, like, this is the this is the one that you use for the client and this is the one that you use for the server. No, there's not really a client cable and a server cable. I just kind of sort of mesh together some of my terms. So if I say client cable, I just mean the cable that I put in myself on the Nexus into the cyber flood and then I put my client subnet on top of that. You'll see in the Spirant cyber flood there is a terminology of clients and servers so I tend to just keep that terminology. This is truly a layer 4 through 7 traffic generator so true HTTP, true HTTPS, etc, etc. So that nomenclature works really well. So first we're going to go ahead and cable it up and then we're going to go into the cyber flood. We're going to create a queue with these two ports. Now when I was new to cyber flood I have to admit that the concept of a queue um, was a little bit difficult to me but I was over in the cyber flood virtual environment uh, which is one of the reasons why I'm actually using our C100s for this video because I think it's an easier thing to understand in a physical environment. So we're going to create a queue with these two ports on it. We're going to create a new test over in cyber flood, create a client subnet, a server subnet, run the test and poke around. Easy peasy. So let's go ahead and do the first thing. So I cabled it up. Uh, to the Nexus. So let's go ahead and also go over to my Nexus. And if we see Ethernet 111, um, I just have a description here. Uh, cyber, I'm connected to CyberFlow C100. This is my client side. This is so if I'm doing troubleshooting on here. So 10.101.01. So the Nexus 9K is going to be the default gateway for the clients to get off subnet. Ethernet 115 server side. So 10.201.0.1, so that again, the Nexus 9K is going to be the default gateway for the servers to get off of their subnet. So easy peasy there. Now we're gonna go ahead and go into CyberFlood and create a queue with these two ports. Now, before we do that, let's go ahead and set the stage. Picture's worth a thousand words. So in our lab environment, these are the two C100s that we have here. They're racked on top of each other. Uh, with rack mounts. And so dot .167 is the first C100 and dot .168 is the second C100. So when we go into the cyber flood and the cyber flood is actually connected to both 
and it is a shared environment so different people can go ahead and get into that and I can say okay I'm just going to use the first slot on the second C100 so my cables my slot <laughs> my two ports are on the second chassis in the first slot so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a queue. So if you think of it this way, I'm going to create a construct called a queue uh, that I'm going to do a couple things on. One, that's my reservation. I'm reserving those two. Once I reserve them, no one else can have them. They are reserved. It goes gray. Everyone else sees that it's not available. Mine. Okay. So number one, it's a reservation. Number two, the other thing that it is, is that when I run tests, I configure the test and what you'll see is in the test, I, I put in there which queue or which port reservations I am going to be running all of that traffic on top of. So it's a reservation and it is a way to point to that reservation. Now I've actually used a C100 uh, for a performance test with multiple slots. So that queue then would have more than just one slot in it and more than just one port. So uh, what we're gonna go ahead and do now is we're gonna go ahead and go over to the Cyber Flood and I'm going to create a queue. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's go over to the Cyber Flood. So here is my Cyber Flood. And if we go up here into uh, Device Manager, we can go ahead and ignore all the other ones, but here we have 167 and 168. So this is one of the C100s and this is the other C100. These are the two C100s that you saw in the picture. I'm going to expand this one and you'll see what I have is available and no one else happens to be using this. And I just was using this last night. So now we're gonna come over here and we're gonna create a queue. So I'm gonna go into Queue Manager. I'm going to reserve, so 167, 168. I'm going to reserve this slot right here. I'm going to reserve those two ports. So let's create a queue. So cyber flood fun with fish, with fish J. Okay, uh, so with fish. And I'm gonna click this right here, which says I want this one, right? We can see that it's green, so we know the ports are up and now it goes gray. So you can see that this is my one that I'm doing. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click yes. So I have reserved from chassis 168, I've re reserved the first slot. Now what you can also see is if you go to 167, see how this is a little gray right here? These other ones are white. I actually, this is actually reserved. So I know that I can't use that one. You can also see from over here, this one is taken. So easy peasy. So we have gone ahead and we have created our queue. The next thing we're supposed to do is we're supposed to create a test. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to jump in here and do throughput with mixed traffic. The reason why I'm doing throughput with mixed traffic is because I think it's a very simple one. I could have chose just HTTP and then I'm done a trial run and have you see the PCAP. But I think this one's a little bit easier because if you can look at this, you can see this is true HTTP, this is true HTTPS, this is true FTP. And, and how do I know that? Look at this, right? This is the receive window. This is retry. So what we're actually going to be doing is coming up with a test and then pushing instructions, including how many times do you retry? Okay. What is your receive window? Uh, what are your act times? So it's, it's a lot of stuff, and this is from the client side and the server side. So you're actually telling the device drivers out there what you're supposed to be doing. So, okay. So what we've done so far, going back over here, is we've created a queue with these two ports. We're about to create a test. I'm not going to go back and fix this. <laughs> I'm too lazy. Uh, we're going to create a test, and then we're going to create a client subnet and a server subnet. So if we come back over here, this is going to be our test. Now, the first thing I tend to do when I make a test, you can see that this is the default throughput with mixed traffic. The first thing I tend to do, so I do not forget and have to troubleshoot later, is I, for that test, I reference 
this are these are the port reservations that I made that you're going to run all of this over. So now as soon as I do that, it's no longer this and this is not saved. So now I'm going to go ahead and save it and I'm going to rename it. So this is going to be Cyber Flood Fun. So we've created the test, we've assigned the queue, the port reservations that I have to the test. Now I'm going to have a client. So even as you know, I had it on the left hand side. The clients were on the left hand side. The what is called the device under test, which is our Nexus 9K, which isn't exactly what we're trying to test. I'm just showing you how to run traffic generation and then the server subnet. For right now, I'm going to tell you to ignore these virtual routers. We'll get back to that in the next YouTube. So client subnet, I have two ways of doing this client subnet. So what we can do is in my um, environment, right? It doesn't make a lot of sense for my coworkers and I every single time that we have a client. So we have a lot of subnets that are already created and then we just take it and we just drag it over. But I'm going to go ahead and use certain ones. I'll show you the two ways to do it. So you can go ahead and do it here and create subnet or we could have gone also up here and profile builder and I could have done subnets. But so, and then it would have showed up over here and then I could drag it over. So let's go ahead and just do it this way. And then we'll have a client and then we'll just do 101. And so this will be 10.101.0, uh, I'm sorry, .1.101. Now it's a slash 16. So why did I put a third octet one uh, instead of just leaving it zero? And I think that's just because of doing pox for almost two decades, well, for two decades. And what tends to happen is sometimes when we do proof of concepts for customers, they may ask to do something. So I tend to leave a little bit of room on the bottom and a little bit of room on the top. And because I just never know, and I have enough space with 16. No one said I specifically want you to use all 16s. Default gateway, so okay. Client 10, 101, 1, 101. And then this is your default gateway, which is the Nexus 9K. Now I could do a lot of things here. I could add static routing. I don't need to add static routing because of the fact that I'm just going to my, um, my default gateway to get off the subnet. And I also could put VLANs on here, but I'm directly connected to the Nexus 9K, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Okay, uh, what happens is now it's gonna prompt you for, okay, we see that you're going to create a client. We also see that you're associated with this queue reservation. So the queue that I created with this port reservation. And we know that that is off of 168 and it's slot one. So which port do you want to have be where you're going to have the client traffic come out? With my coworkers and I, we tend to just go ahead and use the top port for client uh, and the bottom part port for server doesn't matter. You'll just always see me doing that just because of the fact that then it's easier for us to jump into each other's environment. So it's just something we tend to do. So now let's go ahead and add the server subnet. So server, and this is 111. And so let's go ahead and do, oh, I'm so sorry, not 111, 201. So this is going to be 10.201.1.111. And I can play with this in the future. I could, if I wanted more space, do a zero. This is just a habit of mine. So again, to get off your subnet, go ahead and do this. So let's save the profile. And then I'm gonna use the bottom port. Oops, a daisy, the bottom port. And then, okay. Now it's not saved, so I'm gonna go ahead and do save before I forget anything else. <laughs> and we're ready to go. Now, Right now this says six gig and it also says, let's go ahead and have it last for six minutes and 30 seconds. We don't really wanna hang out for six minutes and 30 seconds, but you know what? Let's just go ahead and click go. So what's happening right now? Well, it's the cyber flood. Again, it's a layer four through seven traffic generator. So we have windowing, we have acts, we have stuff that we have to do. We're kind of sort of looking at the entire test and we're saying, okay, this is all of the instructions. I'm going to go ahead and verify it. And then I'm going to go ahead and come up with the loads so that I can come up with the instructions for the traffic generation. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to push it out to the C100s. Here's the instructions. This is how much HTTP. This is how much HTTPS. This is how much FTP. This is how much Telnet. This is your windowing. These are your acts. These are your delayed acts. I want you to end with a fin, or I want you to end with a reset, or I want you to do this. I want you to do that. So it's a lot of work that we're actually pushing out there. And it has been pushed out and we are good to go. So we're not going to wait for this whole thing for the six minutes and 18 seconds. Basically, what I just want to show you is it's going to start off here with your test criteria charts as what's opened. So you see that we have the traffic and then we were told to go ahead and wait. Now we're doing what is called a ramp up. And so, which is exactly what we told it to do. So we're ramping up. Now, what's most important, usually for me, is I have a little bit of unsuccessful um, at point two. And so if we look at this, and then point one. Now, admittedly, I know why, um, but we're not going to get into that here. So, but this is going to be, so this is how many, this is my load specification. So from a load specification perspective, there's a lot of different things that you can say that you want. For what we said we wanted was we wanted a desired load of the traffic generation tool to balance all of these different applications. And, oh, by the way, try to stay at six gig. Uh, regardless of your retries and your acts and everything, try to stay at six gig. So if we look right here, this is our load and we have a little bit of unsuccessful, which is a uh, 0 0.001. I actually know what that is. I'm not going to get into that here. And this is all of the different information that's happening. And these are all of the different protocols and it'll tell you this is the incoming, this is the outgoing. So we're running HTTP, HTTPS, uh, HTTP 1.1, HTTPS 1.1, FTP, Telnet, SMTP, POP3, SIFS, IMAP, RTSP. We're running all of the stuff that it said. And this is just, you can get your major geek on here and figure tons and tons of things out. At the end, what you will actually see is you will see a report that you can then download. We'll see those in the future uh, and look at this more. This is also just basic run time, run, run time statistics. Again, this is major geek, major nerdy, major fun. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is we've run the test, we've poked around, and we've looked at it. Now what we did in this environment is we had the clients directly on the Nexus 9K and the servers also directly on the Nexus 9K. What we're gonna do in the next video, and I told you to ignore those virtual routers, for a lot of layer four through layer seven traffic generation, like when I use this and I build this and I use it for Stealth Watch, I actually connect the devices directly. When I actually use it with a device under test, as for example, a firewall, it's not very real world that the clients are going to be directly connected to the firewall. You'll have thousands and thousands of clients directly connected to the firewall and the servers all directly connected to the firewall. So we go ahead and use that virtual router construct, but that will be in the next YouTube. So anyway, hope you had a lot of fun. We cabled it up. We did the client side. We did the server side. We just did it. It was just really super, super simple. Got to admit, I love Cyber Flood. It's a lot of fun, so you'll be seeing a lot more YouTubes. That's it. I'm out. See ya.